Okay, hello boys and girls. Certificate for students in building studies. Tonight we're going to start on the National Construction Code cluster and this presentation is going to allow you to understand the BCA structure. So what is the structure? Figure AO3, the BCA structure shows a pyramid and at the guidance levels at the top we have the objectives and the functional statements. Below those are compliance levels, which are performance requirements. For those performance requirements to be met, we have to use building solutions. We have one of two. We have the deemed to satisfy provisions, or DTS, which is acceptable construction. And then you also have the alternative solutions, which is a different way of building. But for you to comply to the alternative solutions, you need to meet one of those assessment methods. And they can be documentary evidence, verification methods, or expert judgment or even comparison to DTS provisions. You can get that from uh, Volume 1 of your General Provisions. That's where I got that graph. Okay, the objectives and the functional statements, they may be used as an aid to interpretation. For example, refer to Volume 1, Part B1 for the structural provisions, and that is snapshot there. So Part B01 for the objective, I'll just say the one of them. The objective of this part is to safeguard people from injury caused by structural failure. So that's the objective, that's what you want to do when you build. The functional statements can be a bit more specific. So BF11, a building or structure is to withstand the combination of loads and other actions to which it may be reasonably subjected to. So what are the performance requirements? So meeting the performance requirements, compliance with the performance requirements can only be achieved by a couple of ways. As I discussed before, that's complying with the DTS provisions or formulating an alternative solution. Or well, then you can also have a combination of both. So what are the DTS provisions? You can get you can have a look from extract volume two. It's a building solution which complies with the DTS provisions, is deemed to comply with the performance requirements. And if you read through that, what it pretty much says is section three from volume two. As long as you are working to acceptable construction manuals or practice, you will be deemed to satisfy. Okay, so that is stock standard old methods of building, you know, uh, bearers and joists, wall frame, pitch roof, and so forth. So volume two, here's an example. So it's an acceptable construction manual. So 320 for footings and the slabs. So performance requirements are satisfied for footings and slabs if they are installed in accordance with one of the following. That is, the footing or slab is constructed in accordance with AS2870, which is uh, residential slabs and footings, I believe, off the top of my head. You also have pole footings are designed in accordance with AS2159. So if you work to those methods and how those Australian standards uh, require you to build, then you are deemed to satisfy and you meet the performance requirements which are P211 and P223 which I'll let you guys have a look at that yourself. Alternative solutions, they must be assessed according to one or more of the assessment methods. They will only comply with the BCA if the assessment methods have been satisfied and the performance requirements relevant to an alternative solution must be determined in accordance with AO10. So what do they include? Assessment methods can be used to determine that a building solution complies with the performance requirements with supporting evidence, verification methods, comparison with DTS provisions, and also expert judgment. So if you get one of those, whether it could be a structural engineer or a supplier manufacturer, they could give you supporting evidence. I don't know, you could get expert judgment from a structural engineer with regards to a new type of slab or something then you meet the performance requirements for the alternative solution. But you need that documentation given to your building consultant. So which one's mandatory? Quickly have a look at figure AO3 and in that section it will give you an answer to which one is mandatory and it's actually the performance requirements. You need to ensure that you meet the performance requirements to satisfy your building or comply as per the BCA, or as it's now called, the National Construction Code. Okay? I hope that helps. Thank you very much. See you later.